Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargard.com and in this video we are going to look at using the new XLOOKUP function with other functions. So I did a video on XLOOKUP a couple of weeks ago and that was an introductory video to see how it compares to VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP see what improvements we have and how to use it. But in this video, we want to take things further and see some very clever uses of it with other formulas. Now, the XLOOKUP function at the time of doing this video is only available to Office Insiders. Anybody can become an insider and I'll put a link in the description of this video so that you can sign up if you're interested. It will very soon be released to all Office 365 subscribers. Now, let's get on with the tasks in hand. And the very first task here is to find the total sales for the product of spinach. But I do have a drop down list in cell B3, so it could be any product. Now, at the bottom, I've got a couple of sheets. Focusing on the first one at the moment, this sales sheet. Look at this, we've got 12 months, not all 12 months populated yet, but we do have 12 months, and each product is in a row. So we're going to have to have a conditional row to sum. So let's look at how XLOOKUP can help us do this. Back to the XLOOKUP sheet. Going to go through this a little bit quicker because I do have the introductory video. I'll put a link in the description of this video for that as well in case none of you have seen that. Now it's equals x lookup. And we're prompted for the lookup value. That is the product in cell B3. It's a spinach at the moment. Comma, the lookup array. Over to the sales sheet we go. And I'll select the list of products. We're looking for spinach down there. Comma, and then it's the return array. And for this, I'll be selecting all of the month's sales. I'm going to include November, December, so that when those values are there, it automatically will work with them. Now, there's another couple of arguments here, match mode and search mode, but we don't need any of those because it will default to exact match, and that's what we're doing on the product name. Now, if I close bracket and press enter on that, that will return all of the values from that row. Now, that's not what I wanted. I want to sum them, but I wanted to demonstrate XLOOKUP on its own first with the dynamic array engine returning all of the values from the row that is spinach. And if I was to change spinach to salmon, I want to get the values for salmon. If I change it to something else like hot dogs, then I've got hot dogs. OK, let's leave that as hot dog. Now, let me go back into that first formula. Because now that we've returned that range, very cool thing there, XLOOKUP can return a range, not just a value, can return a range as well. Then we can use that in other functions. So to find the total sum, I'm just going to put the sum function before XLOOKUP. So I've got a standard sum function but XLOOKUP is bringing that dynamism. That's the criteria, if you will. That's the if logic, if you want to think of it that way. So first of all, that's, that's pretty awesome because we can bring in multiple conditions quite easily with XLOOKUP too. But also, think about it, we're using a sum function here that could quite easily be an average or some other type of function. Just using sum as it's the classic. So this is an extremely versatile way of getting some aggregations here. Now, if I press enter, there is the sum for the hot dogs. And if I change it to pineapples, we have the sum for pineapples, etc. So there is our first use of XLOOKUP with other functions with the classic sum to get a conditional sum on these rows. OK, next example of XLOOKUP with other formulas. 
In this example, I've got the product of chocolate cake in cell B6. And we just want to return wherever the last month's value was. So reminding ourselves on what the sales sheet looks like, the last month is currently October, but we want some kind of dynamism now because next month it's going to be November, but we don't want to be editing formulas in any way. So over on the X lookup sheet, what we're going to do is use the index function. I thought this would be pretty cool to use X lookup with index. There's always been the debate of what's better, VLOOKUP or INDEX MATCH. Well, how about we start using XLOOKUP with INDEX as well? That will spin the head on our shoulders, won't it? The debate just gets stronger. So with INDEX, it will prompt us for an array. Now, that's where I want XLOOKUP. I want XLOOKUP to bring the array to INDEX. So... Let me put X look up in here, look up value. We have chocolate cake, look up array. This is all the same as the previous example here. So the range of products, comma, return array, all of these values. So I'll just select the whole lot. Close bracket for X look up brings me back to index and I'll put a comma to move out of the array question. And I've got a question on a row number, question on a column number. Now the row number's a mandatory question, column number's not. Now when XLOOKUP has successfully returned the range of a product, it's only going to be one row high. So I'm just going to type one. I have to answer this question, but it's uh, there's only one possible answer because there's only a one row height for a product sales. The column number is the question here. So just bear in mind that although I'm using this to get the last value from a column, you could easily switch this technique for the last, um, sorry, the last value in a row. You could easily switch it for the last value in a column. Now for this, I'm using count A. I'm gonna throw in a count A function and I'm going to count the values for, I'll pick on apple pie here, the first product doesn't really matter. I'm just going to select all of the months for a product, count the values and return it. Now it's important here that I'm starting from column B because that's what the return array begins from. Close bracket for count A, close bracket for the index function. And when I press enter, I've got 177 for chocolate cake. Let me have a look, chocolate cake, 177. And if I was on the other sheet to change this, what should we have? Pizza, 4634 for pizza. 4634 is what we have. So we're now returning the last value from a column or the last value from a row, which you may have done in the past with index, and maybe match to help out or with a count function. But here we're getting X lookup to provide a conditional element to it by returning that product. Quite an interesting way now that we can use it in modern Excel. Okay, for the third and final example in this video, we're going to see XLOOKUP with SUMIF. And this could quite easily be an average if or a SUMIF instead. Now, we could be here all day looking at how XLOOKUP can be used with other functions, whatever those functions may be. XLOOKUP returns a range. Any function that requires a range could be used with it. And there's a lot of new, clever ways that we can use it for advantage to accomplish Excel tasks. For this example, though, we're looking at the product tomato juice and the location is India. Now, this is where the next sheet comes in, regional sales. I've got three regions here, USA, China, India. And then we've got a much larger list. So the current product tomato juice, but same for all of them. I mentioned multiple times because column B's got months. Now, I want to sum all of the tomato juice products, but only for a certain region. So we've got a condition on the row there for the product 
but also one for the country, for the region. So over to the XLOOKUP sheet, and I'm going to start just with the XLOOKUP, and we'll add the sum in after for better understanding. I'm going to get XLOOKUP to look for the country, so the region, the location, whatever you want to call it, India. Comma, the lookup array over to regional sales, and I select the country names, which is C1 to E1. I put in a comma, and the return array is all of the values, all the way down. I could have used a keyboard shortcut here, but it's not that big. There's the bottom, and then I'll close bracket because it's already going to default to exact match and everything else that we want from this. If I press enter, it returns all of the values for India, not just tomato juice, all of them. So there's 170 or something values here. But that condition is done. I've returned the range, that's what we're after. X look at returning a range for other functions. And it's a conditional range, that's India. But if I change it to China, there's China. Let's go back to India. And double click on our formula. And before X look up, we're going to add sum if to do the row condition, that row context, which is the product here, tomato juice. Sum if could be a sum ifs. The range. Now the range is the range that we're testing, which is a product. So over to regional sales we go. And I'm going to select all of the products. Up we come. There we go, A2 to whatever. Comma, the criteria. Ah, oh, that's back on the other sheet. Let me click on X lookup and click on tomato juice. And not it's going to cause a problem, but I'm just going to remove my sheet name from that reference. And then put in a comma. So I'm on the sum range. And that is XLOOKUP, because XLOOKUP is returning the range of values. That's what I want to sum. I've got a conditional range for sum if and a condition, but then the range that's been summed is the bit that's dynamic. I'm going to click on the end, close bracket for sum if, and when I press enter, I have the total sales for tomato juice products, locations India. But if I change tomato juice to roast beef, Roast beef in India, or India to the US, roast beef in the US. Two conditions, one down a column, one across a row. Could have been more because both some ifs and XLOOKUP can handle that. And that is our last example of using XLOOKUP, but hopefully it's given you some ideas in how it may benefit you. And it's definitely worth playing around with this amazing new function to see what potential it has and how it may change the way that we've been working in the past. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.